fun, let's go outside, let's take a walk in the sun. There are things to learn and things to see, a big wide world for you, your dog, and me. Dog Talk. Hi everybody and welcome to Dog Talk. I'm Pat Becker, this is Claudia Hallman, how are you? Fine, thank you. And she has brought one of my, there again, one of my favorite <coughs> breeds, a bloodhound. <laughs> I used to have a bloodhound named Elvira. And Elvira ruled the roost. We had a lot of other dogs, but she very calmly just went around going, oh, really, I wouldn't do that if I were you, <laughs> or that's good, you can do that. And she just, I mean, it was wonderful, and I just absolutely, I love her, and I miss her. the floppy ears. <laughs> uh, how you like this breed, Ted? Is yeah, this Yeah, he's adorable. He is adorable. They are wonderful dogs. Now, this breed goes back to the, the before the 14th century, and these dogs were bred Actually, they, the French say that they bred them. The English and Scottish say that they bred them. Right. But the fight is on. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just glad they're here. And these dogs were used for hunting deer and hogs and things like that. Talented. Oh, they were. They were very talented. And mainly because they weren't as swift as a lot of the hunting dogs, but their noses were incomparable. They just, there was nothing like them. And still to this day, I was, uh, you know, talking with Claudia that these dogs, uh, you know, are searching dogs and they can pick up a human scent for miles. It's yeah. just, it's wow. incredible. You got a good nose. Oh, they've got excellent <laughs> noses. If they had a little bit more energy, <laughs> they'd probably be the <laughs> chosen ones for search and rescue and that sort of thing. But they are, they are wonderful dogs. And I might add, as you see this dog, this is the disposition of these dogs. This is the way that they are. So how long have you had him? He's three years old. Uh -huh. um, he uh, has a litter mate that lives with him. Uh -huh. uh, I know they were so big we couldn't get both of them on the set, so <laughs> <laughs> we chose to get him, and uh, he is he is beautiful. And you said you have about seven acres, yes. and they run and yes. they play yes. and they do all of that kind yes. of thing. Why did you choose this particular breed? Um, my husband had always wanted a bloodhound, and it just happened that. Uh, someone said he, he knew a lady that had bred some. Uh -huh. She only had two, and I thought that, well... As long as you're getting one. Uh, one for you, one for your husband. Well, and it makes... <laughs> They like each other. So. Yes, and and that oh, that's Rose. another good fact because dogs can get lonely. A dog, a sing, a dog that's a single dog in the house sometimes gets very lonely. And I always recommend another dog. If there are two of them, it's great. Three of them, you can get a little scrappy. <laughs> you know, if you have as many as I do, you really have to monitor it. But uh, but they are two dogs is wonderful, and I I do highly yeah. recommend that. Now, dogs of this size, you've got to have plenty of space for them, and that's for sure. And they do like to wander and and to, you know go around. Around, and they do, sometimes they'll get lost because they're following that scent. So you have to be careful. Well, we have made you, Claudia, and your dog, this uh, the dog of the week. This is a $100 gift certificate to A1 Pet Emporium. Oh, thank you. Now, I have included toys here for both dogs because I know that they, uh, you know, that since you have two of them. What is that? Oh, what, boy. What's going that on Watsy? here? What is that, Potsy? What is that? Is that a toy? Do they play with toys? <laughs> He's looking at you like, Mom, is this okay? Can I have this? <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's something you could play with. He said, maybe later. <laughs> He's like, back, to, back to the petting guy. <laughs> back, back to the petting. He's loving that. Well, we thank you so much for coming well, on and, and bringing us. This is very nice. This is the first time that we have had the opportunity to have a bloodhound on, and I am so delighted. Thank you. They're great dogs. Great really family pretty. dogs. Super dogs to have fun with. Right. Thanks again. And Thank we're going to take a quick break, so we'll be right back. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. All right, here with us we have a, a bunch of fellows from the uh, Department of Corrections, and, uh, and recently I got to go to Paul's Valley and work with these folks. I want to introduce uh, Richard Price, who's the program administrator, as well as Lieutenant uh, Eric Enblom, Sergeant John Burnett, and this is Riley, 
And he is um, also with the Department of Corrections, and he has a very special skill. And you see he's kind of got the temperament where he's moving around and he's doing a lot. And, and I want to show you guys what Riley does. Let's take a look at this video. <laughs> One of the many missions of Dog Talk is to show you working dogs in Oklahoma. That's why I'm here in Paul's Valley with a canine unit and the Department of Corrections. We're going to show you two very cool things. One, puppies, which we love, and two, a dog that's sniffing cell phones in prisons in Oklahoma. So we usually presented a dog at about a year of age. We go through uh, a series of tests, basically proprietary, you know, for most trainers that they won't divulge, but we look for certain drives within the dog, uh, certain behaviors that would uh, benefit us as a working dog, uh, usually associated with a really high energy and a reward device drive. Uh, we use that uh, basically to train the dog. The state wanted to provide a, a cell phone detection dog at little to no cost, so we went through the rescue route. We looked for dogs. Lack of a better term, being a breedist, we were looking for German Shepherds and Belgian Malinois, which was really hard to find in the rescues or the pound. Uh, Richard Price and I probably looked at 450 dogs, pulling them out, throwing a ball. Um, we'd we'd kind of come to the point where it was like, this is never gonna happen. You know, We just aren't finding a dog that meets the requirements that we want. Like I said, we were presented Riley from uh, Dogs as Family. Uh, threw the ball around a little bit, kind of liked what we saw, uh, took him in, started the training program, but then we found ourselves with a dog that was kind of damaged goods. You know, he'd been adopted out and brought back, adopted out, brought back. At one point, he would, you know, when they first got him, he was a stray. So they had to catch him in a cage, which is a little traumatic, and he then had been neutered, which I'm sure was even more traumatic. So we get him, and we go through the process that we would normally do with our dogs, and he just, he's too shy. He's too reserved. You know, he won't, he won't go with us. He doesn't trust us, so it took a long time to build trust, probably another month above what we would normally do with the, one of our working dogs. And once we finally had that trust, and we really found a trigger that worked for him, because the reward device was a little bit difficult for us as well. I mean, he liked the ball, but he didn't love it. And once we, we figured out what that was, I mean, he took to it like a duck to water. I mean, he was just almost overnight, boom, and he was off and running. Well, we initially we started in a warehouse uh, to make the, the 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 hides easier. Okay, basically long walls, long areas. So you just in, increase the the amount of training each day to increase the endurance, just like an athlete. Um, once we did that, we started making the hides more difficult. You know, higher locations, lower locations, deeper within the setting, hiding it inside other items, and then we had to proof him off any other electronics that we knew we were only finding cell phones. So we did that with other electronic devices, and we just keep extending and challenging him every day. So when he goes into the facility, he does two types of missions. He does the strike force missions, which is a co-effort between the K-9 unit and CERT teams, coordinated by K-9. We hit a facility that doesn't know we're coming. Even the officers that are assisting us don't know where we're going until we meet at a centralized location we move to it. At that point, the, all the offenders are run through our, our cell sense and deep tissue scanners. We clear out the population. We know that they didn't walk out with contraband. And then Riley works for probably three hours. Again, breaks here and there. But he ends up screening cells, open areas, uh, pretty common stuff. Uh, the other part is he goes actually to facilities just with John. John coordinates with the facility. Hey, I'm gonna bring, bring the cell phone dog down today. And that's usually a day to a week prior that you wanna coordinate this because we wanna get the dog in the right place at the right time. Because it's the dog and the handler and a few assisting officers against 160, 250, 300, 1,000 inmates. And once we walk through the door, they realize we're coming. So we try to hedge our bets and get that dog in the right place at the right time. So all that coordination takes place prior to, goes in, usually ends up working an hour or two at a, at a certain facility. And then by that time, once, once you can't control the complete environment like you would normally at a facility versus the, the strike force mission, you're kind of done because now all the offenders know he's there. So, but it, it's more limited at the facilities, but he does good work both ways. He's bounced around from person to person. He's, he's curious in everything he looks at. Uh, he's always 
ready to work. When as soon as he came in here, he started working. Uh, uh, Malinois are, are the same way, you know, they're they're really high strung dogs. They're wanting to do something. It's not a dog that you would take home and, and put in the back of the yard and, and just let it stay out there and hang out. He, they're gonna need some attention. They're gonna need some somebody out there to uh, do something with them, play with them, work them, you know, wh whatever. But uh, Riley, he just, he's a busy, he's got a busy nose. So he's, he's always curious about everything. He'll stick his nose anywhere. If, and you know, and there happens to be a phone in there, he'll he'll tell you. I mean, the, the compulsion training using the shock collars and pinch collars and, and the, the violent end of it um, usually creates those behavioral issues that we're talking about. You know, the dog becomes we've all heard the term gun shy. Um, so if, you, if you're continually shocking a dog while it's on the bite and it, you can't get him to out, then eventually he comes to expect that at a certain point. Because if you let the dog bite the sleeve for three to five seconds and then you're hitting him with the, with the shock collar yelling out, even if you don't hit the shock collar, at about three to five seconds you're going to see the dog immediately. And so we don't want that kind of negative, you know, it's always positive reinforcement and, and it just, it breeds a, a, a better dog, it's more proud, you know, it stands better, it doesn't cower, it, I, I like a dog that's very proud, that stands, stands well, tail out, mouth open, you know, confident dogs. And compulsion has a tendency to beat a dog down emotionally and physically, and that's, that's not what we're trying to do. So it's a big psychological event for us to get the dog to push through, and then the training event afterwards to get him in the field. And you know, the first time he goes out and finds a phone, and then when he's certified nationally with the National Police Canine Association as the first cell phone dog in the nation, I mean, it was, it was pretty incredible. And when this happened, I don't think I've ever, I mean, I actually enjoy coming to work every single day. I mean, I don't, we usually stay till six o'clock at night and that doesn't even go on a time card. It's just an extra hour, but we talk about what we're gonna do the next day because it's almost not even work. I mean, it's crazy, right? That your job, that you would actually love your job is just, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. It really is. I'm a happy man. <laughs> That's all I can say. Well, Riley truly is a star uh, and very talented. Now, at the beginning and the end of that video, we saw some puppies. Can you tell us a little bit about, it's, you said Belgium? They're Belgian Malinois. Okay. Um, what the department's realized, or our department's realized, is, is NARC dogs are running anywhere from about 8100 to about $15,000 to buy. Um, we had the ability, this is our first litter of puppies, um, we had the ability, we decided to go ahead and breed a litter, and those will become our next generation of NARC dogs within the, within the department. And, and is Riley the only non-Melanois you have? Uh, no, we, we currently have Riley. Uh, we have a lot of German Shepherds in the system. Okay. Um, and then we have a lot of Belgian Malinois in the okay. system. Okay, but so Riley looks different than the rest of the fleet. It definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, now when we were watching the video that you all just saw, Riley was kind of jumping around and, and, and he has that temperament, that high strung attitude. Why is that a good thing? He just destroyed your tennis ball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because we ask him to do so much every day. Uh -huh. uh, you know, lot, long, long days, lots of work, lots of energy expended. And uh, most pets or non, non working breeds, even, even hunting type dogs, just don't have the endurance that we're looking for. He has the endurance, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, you know, a, a lot of people are going to ask us, how does he find, the, what's the scent that he's smelling? Uh, can you tell us what that is or? Uh, cell phone. <laughs> cell phone. I was told they have to be a little vague um, because uh, we don't want anyone to catch on to what he's doing. But um, how, how many has he, has he found? We're probably somewhere around the 60. Yeah, 55 to 60 mark at this point wow. operationally. Uh, not including, obviously, what we've done in training. Or he's going to eat that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, no, he's, he's gone out, uh, he's 
done a couple missions here in the last week, and he's got more coming up. So you know, we got high hopes for him. But he's always been fairly successful when we go out. Um, most successful uh, cell phone dog. We, we created a couple others, but this one, Riley by far is champ. And Richard, you said that uh, word's getting around about Riley and people are kind of calling over to Paul's Valley and saying, you guys got a dog that might sniff cell phones? Yeah, we've, uh, we've had requests. <laughs> our, our biggest request is from the, the federal transfer site in Oklahoma City, the federal prison um, out, at, out at the airport. Um, they've called us twice now uh, to, and specifically asked for Riley. Um, You're going to have the dog that was in the paper, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll bring the <laughs> yeah. dog that was in the paper. <laughs> well, well, it's really great. We appreciate all you do. And, um, and uh, it's, it's obvious that Riley is a talented, talented dog. <laughs> Full of energy. And this is, you know, because you said he goes two, three hours at a prison at yeah. a time. So yeah. this is important, guys. This is what the reason that a dog like Riley's great is because of that ball drive that you guys talk about and also the energy. And uh, we wanna say that this is, uh, this is great for, for Oklahoma. Thank you guys so much for coming in and, and talking with us. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break and uh, we'll be right back. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. Well, it's so good to see John Gary. How are you? Good. Are you? It's excellent to know that you are now superintendent, and uh, welcome, for goodness sakes. How is it? How does it feel? Oklahoma City Animal Shelter couldn't be in better hands as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's, uh, it's very exciting. Obviously, I've been there a long time, and so to have this opportunity is something I've been waiting for, and so I'm very much looking forward to it. You know, we're only three weeks into it, so I know I got to a lot to do, and, uh, and but it's uh, very, very exciting. I am so excited for you. And Jarita Becker, that's a good name. <laughs> how are you? I'm great, how are and you? And you are basically kind of um, PR for the Oklahoma City Animal Shelter. You sort of talk to the public, talk to the media and stuff like that. And uh, so what else does it involve? Well, I have a hand in that for sure. I'm the community events program manager. Uh -huh. And so most of what we do is, is out there in the public's eye. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, it's, you know, it's an interesting job because you have to organize all of this, mm -hmm. these things because it, it is. Some of us, and, and I will admit, I get over-enthusiastic being, you know, as part of the media when I hear a dog story or a cat story or an animal story. And in this case, it's all animals because you guys, it's cats, dogs, chickens, hogs, snakes. <laughs> You've had, oh, you know, horses the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. So there is so much to cover, but in each of them, there is a story. So I would guess that you want the stories to be correct. You want it to get out there with correct information. You want to protect the animals, but you want to get the information out so that it becomes a lesson for all of us who are watching, you know, on how to, uh, to um, handle all of these kinds of things. So John, um, you know, I just, I just can't tell you how excited I am for you because I've known you for a long, long time and it's just been exceptional. I know when Catherine English was um, actually the supervisor, you know, she really, really enjoyed you and you were her secondhand man. And now to have the, uh, the position is just, I, I am just thrilled. I am just thrilled. So tell me, what, what do you think? What's the mission here? Well, uh, obviously, we've made a lot of progress over the last, uh, especially the last three or four years. But so, we, we still have a little ways to go. Obviously, we're we're still trying to reach our goals of the 75% live release rate, and so we have a lot of uh, programs that we need to look into to see what we need to do. You know, we're down to the point now where we're we're saving the the, the animals that are easy to save, and so now we're down to working on the ones that are a little more difficult and uh, the harder to adopt, harder to place dogs. Uh, a lot of them are dogs that uh, need some behavior and things yes, like that. So we yes. have to start looking into those type of programs. Yeah, you know, and I know that that's uh, when I did my research for these past few years, I now realize that it's not just spay and neuter, although that is extremely important. The dogs come into the shelter because of behavioral 
problems. And of course, this is you have people on your staff and people that volunteer to come in and give these dogs their temperament tested and they are give them some training and the people who adopt them have the availability of that. How nice is that? And it kind of secures that home, doesn't it, more? And uh, with fosters and everything, it, it's a huge organization. It just really is. And we were so excited because um, the, your show, Dog Tales, is on and it's on channel 20. 20 and it's on once a month and uh, runs what time is it on it? It actually runs uh, several times a day throughout the month so uh -huh. uh, it's played multiple times so you can catch it at, at different times and it, and it varies so it's hard to know exactly when but it's on at least three times a day uh -huh. uh, every day of the month. And on that so. particular show you feature animals that are up for adoption, you feature adopted animals, you know the ones that have been adopted and are happy in what they are doing, you show the animals on your show. As a matter of fact I am going to help you on this, I feel so, so um, I just am filled with joy because it's just a great opportunity for me to get close to the, exactly what you all do and to see all these animals. We actually, uh, when we went down and did our first show, which was great, we really enjoyed it, we did a little video on it. Would you like to see that? Sure. I'm also anxious. Let's watch it. My name is Eric Nazem. I'm a digital media producer for the city of Oklahoma City. And I'm Francis Linder, so I'm also a digital media producer for the city of Oklahoma City. What I do for Animal Tales TV is I act as producer and director for the show. We put the script together and we schedule the time for the host, Pat, to come in and her guests. Three, two. Hi everybody and welcome to Animal Tales TV. I'm Pat Becker. And they get on our set here at City Hall in our studio and talk about the subjects they want to talk about. And we try and make sure that uh, the animal welfare division is well represented and people understand what it is they do for the city and for the animals in Oklahoma City. Animal Tales TV airs on Channel 20 or the government channel in Oklahoma City. It is on Cox on Channel 20, or it is also on YouTube. So Francis can tell you a little bit more about Channel 20. Besides the Animal Tales TV, you'll be able to see uh, one of our main things we do just for help with open government is we broadcast live and replay most of the government meetings, whether they would be City Council, Planning Commission, uh, Traffic Commission, Board of Adjustments, um, you'll find that these meetings will impact your life because these are the ones, these are the meetings that are actually setting the rules to what goes on in the city and your neighborhood. Other shows we do here, the mayor has his own show and interviews people about upcoming events in the city or different agencies you may have not heard about. And we give the council people the same opportunity to do the same thing. You can also find OKC.gov will lead you to all kinds of information and take you to our YouTube as well. All the back episodes of Animal Tales TV are on there. You can see all the different wonderful animals that have been on the show. Every month when we have the show on, we have guest animals, lovely cats and dogs, and they get a lot of attention here in City Hall. They usually end up making a trip up to our offices for all the other employees to get to see what great dog or cat has appeared for the show. Julie Bank did a great job. Since Julie is now gone, Pat has been very gracious to step in and help co-host the show with John and is really doing a great job keeping things rolling for us. Uh, we really enjoy giving them the opportunity to produce this show and be on air. It really does help save a lot of animal lives and let people know that animal welfare, when they're coming out, they are not there to cause you a problem. They're there to help the animal and to help you. And so we are very appreciative that we get the opportunity to help them with their mission.
Oh, such cute little faces. You know, it, it just strikes me that um, it's, a, it's a huge job, huge job for you and a bigger job even for you. So, you know, with, with everything that's going on, what do you think is going to be the, the easiest job for this? What is easy about it? Is there anything? Uh, I don't think there's anything easy about it. <laughs> yeah. it, is, it is a big job, and, and, you know, the volume of animals that we see every year, it's just, uh, we, we have our hands full every day. Mm -hmm. you know? So, if, Jorita, when you are talking with her and setting up these events, you talked about some events. What, what are some of those? We do a lot of pet adoption outreach events. We've got um, several already scheduled for October. We have some places that we go every weekend. Fantastic. Regularly scheduled. And, and but you, we also... Yeah, for our viewers, an outreach event means taking the animals that are up for adoption to a certain place so Correct. that the public can view them with the opportunity of adoption. Right. And we recently put on the streets our wagon wagon our brand new pet adoption van. It holds about 28 animals. Fantastic. Um, high demand. We get we get requests every week to bring it out to new sites. So that's really exciting Excellent. that we can expose new people to exactly. pet adoption. So you go to different the events. Do, or do people invite you to come mm -hmm. to those particular events? So when will be the next event that you will be going to? Today? It's daily? <laughs> every weekend. Every we have, weekend. We have events every weekend and oh, this weekend. We yeah, that's so exciting. Weekend. So who you set up these events? Mm -hmm. and so you have someone who uh, who runs the truck, I guess, and that we sort of do. thing. We have an events coordinator yeah. that that, that uh, does that. He does a lot for <laughs> for his part time job. He coordinates all of our events. Yes. I love it. I love it. Well, you all work so very very hard, and I am so pleased and proud of what Oklahoma City Animal Shelter has always done. But especially now, John, I'm expecting big things here. <laughs> <laughs> Great successes. We thank you so much for coming by, thank and uh, it is a blessing to have you guys. We're going to uh, see you guys next week, and hope you do join us, because there's something entertaining, and um, some people that are very entertaining and very, very enlightening for us. So do join us, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Talking about dogs, talking about big dogs, uh-huh, talking about little dogs, oh yeah, chasing the ball, chasing the cat, digging the whole thing like that, dogs, talking about dogs, laughing dogs, sad dogs, happy dogs, mad dogs, dogs, just talking about dogs. Lost and alone, running the street, checking the garbage, looking to eat. Out there sad and on their own, the law will get them if they got no home. Dogs, talking about dogs. Dogs, we're talking about dogs. You say they were angels sent from above, then a year or two later you fell out of love. You dumped them, man, and kicked them out. Now what the heck was that about? Dogs. 